and welcome to the Sheep and Cheerful podcast, episode number 40. This is a podcast about uh, myself trying to live as creative and crafty a life as possible in as cheerful a way as possible. My name is Nikki, I am the hostess and CEO of All Things Sheep and Cheerful and I'm coming to you from Sussex which is on the south coast of England in the United Kingdom in case anyone didn't know where England was. Okay, um, I'm joined today as ever by my two faithful mm, English Springer Spaniels, Honey and Henry, who are currently, currently settled. That said, if anybody saw my Instagram feed this morning, they would have seen that I've had notification of a delivery coming this morning. <sighs> of course it is. So we will be interrupted and at this point I apologise last week for the fact that my dogs may have set off your dogs barking. I got a few messages from friends who said that their dogs set off once they heard my dogs set off. It's a bit like saying um, A-L-E-X-A on a podcast, isn't it? Because then everybody's, you know who, sets off as well. So I will try and cut out the barking um, when it happens. Although that said, we are shut in the kitchen. They may not hear my daughter Hannah is upstairs, so hopefully she will be on door duty. Right, that's digression enough for today. It's pouring, pouring with rain. It's kind of a sleety rain today. It's very grey overhead and very cold for us faint-hearted folk on the south coast. <laughs> I think it's about seven degrees outside, which is chilly and it's windy, so there is a wind chill factor. Um, and I should tell you where you can find me, shouldn't I? Because that's what the professional people do. Uh, I am Clara Pegarty on Instagram. That is with two G's and one T. And, no, sorry, honey was starting to climb on the counter then. And I am obviously Nikki Winterton on YouTube. I am Nikki Winterton on Ravelry. But we also have a, a group chatter, chatter group for the podcast which is the Sheep and Cheerful podcast. I will put the link to that down in the box below. It's a lovely podcast group. It's a lovely uh, Ravelry group. I will talk a bit more about that a little later when I talk about some of the new things that are going on and some of the giveaways. I also have an email address now, which is very fancy schmancy. Some of you have used it already, so I know it works. So it is Sheep and Cheerful podcast at gmail.com and again that will be down there so if anybody wants to contact me but they don't feel they can go onto Ravelry or they're not on Instagram then you can drop me an email so that's that right that's the administrati I think also we'd just like to say as today is the 26th of November yesterday was Thanksgiving in the USA for all our USA friends so Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had a wonderful day <clears throat> and where possible spent it um, in the bosom of the family and feasted and celebrated and gave thanks. So um, I always know that on Instagram it's going to be a relatively quiet day on Thanksgiving because obviously most people are concentrating on being with people in real life which is important obviously. Um, it's funny, uh, I keep a, a sort of two line a day diary that I write in um, at night when I go to bed and it's become a habit now and this is, it's a five year one, it's one of those one line a day ones and this is the fourth year that I've kept this going and you see the previous day's entries from the previous years so today I'll look and I will see the last four years worth of November the 26th so it's great fun and I said to Gary yesterday, uh, I said, do you know what, I bet your bottom dollar that this time last year we watched Miracle on 34th Street. And I looked last night and we didn't, I failed, but we did watch it tonight. So because Thanksgiving always sets me up, even though we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in the UK, it sets me up for the beginning of the Christmas celebrations and those of you who've seen Miracle on 34th Street, and I'm talking about the newer version, not the original, um, the one with um, 
Mara Wilson and Elizabeth Perkins and of course Richard Attenborough. The ultimate Kris Kringle. Um, we'll know that it begins with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade so that's why I link it to Thanksgiving. Also I should say that I will talk a bit more about this in a little bit but um, as I mentioned last week this Sunday just gone was stir em up Sunday so it was make your Christmas pudding day and I made the Christmas pudding and I said to Gary right we're going to watch a Christmas film tonight and we watched Deck the Halls which is a ridiculous film but I love it it's part of our tradition with Danny DeVito, Matthew Broderick um, and one of my favourite musical comedy actresses uh, Kristen Chenoweth I'd watch the whole film just to hear her sing Oh Holy Night at the end. It's so wonderful. So we watched that, had a good old chortle at that. And then when I went to bed, looked at my diary, we did exactly the same last year. Made the Christmas pud on the Sunday, on Stir em Up Sunday, made the Christmas pud and watched Deck the Halls. And again, I watched Deck the Halls early because it begins on December 1st with their, what they call a Christmas calendar, we would call an Advent calendar over here. So there you go. A little bit of waffle for you there. Happy Thanksgiving anyway. That does segue nicely, nicely into talk about the coming up make along, which I am starting. And I'm being supported um, kind of, um, what do I want to say? Um, in every way apart from chatter thread sort of way by my lovely friend Janine, who is Faithful Sheep Crafts on Instagram and she has a podcast and there is a new podcast episode coming up very soon. She's recorded it so hop over as soon as that comes up. She's recorded two so far and they're just wonderful. They're such lovely podcasts. So hop over and show Janine some love. Um, she's a in real life friend of mine. We met through knitting obviously and I have recently, Hannah and I have recently gone along to her church and it was wonderful so we're going to be going back to her church and Ginny and I love to knit together and quilt and all those sorts of things. So this is kind of a joint endeavour between us both, but she's such a busy lady. She's a superwoman, really, um, that I said, look, I'll, I'll take the brunt of it on my group. Oh, itch your nose. And you can, um, you can be there as moral support and, and support me that way. So... The make-along is going to be called the Prayer for Make-along and it was originally the Prayer Blanket Make-along but several people contacted me and said they would really love to join in but they don't feel they could make a blanket. So, and the last thing I wanted to do was to, for people to be excluded from this. So it is just the Prayer for Make-along, the Prayer for Mal that I'm going to be starting to run or launching. That sounds really isn't it? Um, I'm launching that on the 1st of December, so that is next Wednesday. See, I've got that right. I know this because it's Hannah's birthday on Thursday, which is the 2nd of December. Birthdays help, even though I didn't realise until yesterday that it was actually next week. Anyway, um, so the idea, and I've written it down, the idea of the prayerful make-along is, I've got here, Make a drink, light a candle, be comfortable, breathe, and create. And I'd love for you to just take a little bit of your crafting time. It doesn't even have to be every day. It can be, you know, once a week, a couple of times a week, just to sit, work with your hands, and allow your mind to be at peace, and to then bring it into focus on a particular aspect of faith or I don't want to exclude people who maybe don't feel that they can, um, they, they're not sure about their faith, they're not sure what they believe. This might be a lovely time for you to jump in and just use it as a quiet time. So please don't be put off um, and prayer, prayer is any kind of connection or contact you have with our Father God in heaven. So you could just sit there while you're crafting and say, you know, look, God, I know, I, I don't know you. Show me who you are. Or can you, can you point me in the right direction? 
or not. You know, I, I want you just to feel that peace and that calm. And the other thing I was going to say is, and I was given this tip a long time ago in, in terms of relaxation. If you're crafting, and we all have really busy lives, um, if you get thoughts come into your head that you don't want in your head, there's two options I'm going to... Two, <laughs> two options I'm going to suggest. Keep a notepad and paper next to you. If you get a thought come into your head or you remember something that you don't forget, jot it down, then let it go. Similarly, if you get thoughts coming in and you think, no, I don't want to think about that now, just envisage them as a balloon and just let them rise up and away. Oh, look, I'm very... <laughs> rise up and just let them float away. And if you do that, over time, that will become something that you do automatically and it will become easier. It's not easy to relax, is it? Uh, I certainly don't find it easy to switch off. So that's the idea. Now the prayerful mouth, the prayer side of it, for those of us who have a faith and a commitment to living life as followers of Christ, is that um, I'm going to put up some prompts. Uh, you don't have to follow the prompts, but each month we're going to be focusing on a topic and we're going to pray over that topic and over our work and over the project we're knitting as we knit it. So, or cro 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 crochet it. Um, a prayer shawl is something that is, is very commonly done. In particular, you, you make a shawl for someone and you pray for that person as you make it. Um, it's not about infusing special powers into what you're making. Um, that's not what we believe, that's not what you do. It's an inanimate object, obviously what you're making. But the idea is that you, you pray and you think of these things as you're making and then you have that association. Um, and then you can either gift the item if you want to pray for someone in particular or you, you keep it for yourself. Um, so I will be putting up prompts. So the first month of December, the, the overall prompt is going to be gratitude, which again links back to Thanksgiving. And there's going to be four prompts. So I'm going to put one up one a week. I will put them up in the Ravelry group, but I will also put them up on Instagram. You can choose to follow, use those prompts as a starting point, or you can use your own prompts in your own study. That's absolutely up to you. So December is going to be gratitude, and week one, which starts next Wednesday, but I will put stuff up on Instagram on Tuesday, is going to be being grateful for our own bodies, our talents, our abilities, um, and basically all the things that our bodies enable us to do. So it's being grateful for our very personal gifts from God, or our, um, our health, or um, it's kind of inward looking in that respect. So we're thanking God, particularly for our talents of being able to knit or crochet, having the knowledge, having the time, all those sorts of things. So that is week one, that's going to be the prompt. As I say, you don't have to make a blanket, you can make any item you like, but please, in the spirit of it, make it an intentional project. So don't just think, oh, I'll join in with that sock, but think, right, that pair of socks, they're going to be my prayerful make-along socks, or that cowl is going to be my prayerful make-along cowl, and just kind of use it as a time to consolidate. Oh dear, I sound, I'm not setting myself up as a guru, I'm just sharing, sharing my thoughts on this. So anyway, that's that. There will of course be giveaways and prizes and all that sort of biz, but I'm not going to talk about that today. I will mention my blanket a little later on, but that's quite enough of that. We need to get on with some actual knitting, don't we? Um, oh, yeah, we do, but very quickly. Uh, the prize winners I announced last week, three out of the six ladies have contacted me. If you haven't contacted me yet for your pattern, for your free pattern that you've won, please do reach out. You can get me on email, on Instagram, or on Ravelry. So contact me because I've got these patterns with your names on them. Go back and look at last week's to see if you were the winner, although I could quickly tell you, couldn't I, which would be useful. We've got Morning Thought, which was Kay. We've got Karen Leopard. No, Ka yes, Karen Leopard. 
and Karen Sorrentino. So if you haven't contacted me already, or if you have and you haven't heard from me, maybe I haven't got your message, please reach out again. Um, and I will do the draw for this week's giveaway at the end of the show. Show, that sounds really good, doesn't it? Right, okay. Oh, I've got more to talk about. Well, let's talk about some knitting first. Okay. Right, what I'm wearing. Those of you who have watched, oh, a year ago or two years ago, will recognise this. This is the first time this winter I pulled this out. This is the Azimuth sweater, and it's by Marie Green, who is um, stone, isn't it? Oh, for goodness sake. Olive. Olive stone knits. Is that it? Olive knits, not stone. <laughs> Olives have stones, don't they? Olive knits, Marie Green. It's the Azimuth sweater and it's, oh, I love this sweater. It's uh, knit in DK. It's got the cables all the way down the front. I did three quarter length sleeves because I'm lazy. And it's got this lovely sort of, it's not a boat neck, but it's a, uh, a wide neck and this rib here um, there's no cables on the back so it's all on the front and this is knit in DK and I used the lavender lemonade color way from Deborah over at candy shop yarns so um, this is my sweater of today it's really gorgeous it's a lovely knit because the cables only are on this panel at the front and the rest, it's, you know, um, bread and butter knitting, really. Don't know where that came from. Potato chip knitting, bread and butter knitting, TV knitting. You'll also notice my hair is very boingy and short looking today. That's because I've just taken it, taken it out of plaits. So it hasn't dropped down yet. I haven't had it cut. It's just like, I thought it was quite pretty. Anyway, right. I'm going to come back to these other bits in just a moment because we are nearly 20 minutes in. Show us some knitting. And it is going to be a shorter episode. It's going to be shorter today. Promise. Because I have no FOs. No FOs. No. Nada. Null. Nil point. Um, yeah. That's it. No FOs. Do you remember last week I showed you I was finishing the I was finishing a muscle bra hat for my mum, the pale mint coloured one, the Bird Street UK one. Uh, I should have brought that back. I saw her yesterday. Um, that's all finished. It has a beautiful pom pom. I will get pictures of these once they're all done. And I had cast on. I just cast on the beginning of um, the second one she's making. So the pink one, which is also Bird Street yarn. And I've done the cast-ons because she doesn't like doing the make one left, make one right. Um, she struggles a bit with that. So I've done that. So I gave it to her on Saturday. I went to see her yesterday. It's done. She's only gone and done it, ain't she? So, this is very nearly an F.O. She's whizzed down that. That's because the Aosta cardigan that we're making, or that I'm helping her make, she couldn't get on until I went round there yesterday, so she just put all the time into this. She's also crocheting the um, cupcake stripe blanket from Attic24. You remember I showed you my scrappy one a few weeks back? Well, after I made, I wove a blanket. I bought the Attic24 pack from Wool Warehouse for that colorway, uh, for that blanket. And I wove a blanket in the yarn for a friend of mine. It's a picnic blanket. And I had so much yarn left over of every colour. So I gave it to mum and I said, here, why don't you have a crochet? She's made the blanket. She's just doing the border. So I will get some pictures. It's beautiful and it's huge. And I have asked her to put my name on it. Because <laughs> her and dad said, well, we've got too many blankets. I'm like, no, you can't ever have too many blankets. What's the matter with you? So anyway... This is the Muscle Bra Hat. This beautiful pink colourway is candy. I'm pretty sure it's candy. From my lovely friends John and Claire. It is candy. So, um, yeah. Well, I say my lovely friends. 
Claire's my friend, and I know John through Claire. So they're kind of friends. We're all friends, aren't we? So, so I need to do the decreases and cast that off, and that will be that. Mummy's going to have a break from muscle breaths. <laughs> this will be the fourth one she's made. I am going to try and get her to make another one because I thought Hannah might like one, um, but it's not essential. She loves having them there because they're so straightforward and easy to knit on. And I've talked to you about this little project bag before, so I won't go into that. Staying on the theme of muscle bra hats, we're moving into, F, uh, into whips now. Um, yeah, they're three lots of socks and, yeah, another muscle bra. I started because I couldn't give this to mum to do because I'm making my dad a muscle bra hat for Christmas. My dad loves all things colourful. He loves hand knit bits and bobs. He's probably the most knit worthy person in my family, I have to say. I make him socks virtually every year um, for Christmas and he loves them. But he doesn't wear them a lot because he doesn't like to you know, spoiled. Um, anyway, I have knit him a pair of socks, as I have shown on the podcast, I knit him the broken rope socks, and I wanted to knit him a muscle bra hat. And he'd chosen some yarn from my stash, and he'd chosen a colourway that I thought wasn't really, I gave him a choice of three, and it wasn't really him, I decided. So I made an executive decision, and I bought a different skein of yarn. Now years and years ago, the very first pair of socks I made for dad were out of the blue tit colorway from West Yorkshire Spinners. They're British, or oh, they're bird colorways. And oh, friend Jen and I made a whole load of, um, I made wood pigeon socks, which I still have and still wear. Dad still has the blue tit socks. And he loves colors. He's, he's an artist, so he loves all these different colors. So I decided to buy him the Kingfisher colourway. Look at that. It is so lovely. It's vibrant. It's it's just brilliant. I thought that would be great for a hat for dad. So okay, let's pretend I'm not my mum. I can't whiz through these as quickly as she does, but this is this is where I've got to. Oops. Away. Look how that's knitting up. That is so pretty. So love that. And oh look at this. Sorry, look at this stitch marker, oh, this progress keeper. It's a little jar with licorice all sorts in it. That's actually from Candy Shop Yarns. In fact, I think Deborah might have sent me that when she sent me the yarn for this a couple of years ago. I love that. Um, you'll notice I'm actually doing this on Magic Loop. I've One of the reasons I haven't done a lot of knitting this week is because... Um, I think I spoke to you last week about the physio and my arm and everything. And I found that knitting on mini cirques really makes me tense. It really tension, uh, tenses up. I'm better knitting on them than I was. I'm kind of faster and, and more comfortable. But I do knit I, I, much more tense. So I've gone back on to Magic Loop uh, for the moment um, for the muscle for hats. So yeah. So this is West Yorkshire Spinners. Kingfisher colourway, so blues and sort of tealy blue, that lovely flash of orange that you get from a kingfisher. So I'm going to just chip away at this. I've got four weeks. I'm not worried about that. That will be done. But I'm just picking that up. Um, trying to pick it up every day. Obviously, I'm so low on project bags. I've got it in the organza bag. It's a lie. I'm really not. I just can't be bothered to get another project back. <laughs> That's really bad, isn't it? So yeah, Muscle Bra Hat by Zolda Teague, if you don't know that by now. Um, and that's on its way. Right, progress. I have progress with my Gumdrop Nugget Christmas socks, which was a colorway from Yarn Cafe Creations from Christy. And if you remember, oh no. Oh, nuts. I forgot my sock blockers. I got everything laid out beautifully. Hold on a sec. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Deck the halls with bells of holly. 
got some intermission music there that's all fine probably totally unprofessional I have finished sock number one of my Christmas socks okay so I did have a real sock thing this week I did well with my socks let's show you this my sock blockers aren't quite big enough for my feet there you go Ta -da! And I have to say, I like it much more now. Do you remember I said, sorry, sitting back a bit. Do you remember I said I, um, I wasn't keen on the pooling of this? But actually, I think that's really pretty. I think the green makes it, the green contrast. Ah, dog hair, thank you, Henry. Or oh, honey. Um, I definitely think that the green heels and toes uh, frame it brilliantly. I'm so pleased. So that was a mini from my advent minis last year from Lottie Knits. Um, it's lovely actually. That's, it's got hints of blue and it's green. And obviously this, this colourway has those little hints of blue just where the dye hasn't broken down. So it's perfect. So I did a one by one twisted rib for these because I was trying to do something fancy and it went wrong so I pulled it back and just did one by one twisted rib. I did, um, can't remember, I think I do, it's about 80 rounds, usually 7 inches uh, from the top of the cuff to the start of the heel on my socks. I like longer socks, I've said before because I wear them under my boots. Then we've got a, a fish lips kiss heel which is my standard, my go-to heel. I do want to try the shadow wrap heel. Some of the girls in my knit group talk about the shadow wrap heel and are raving about it. So I must, in the new year, I'm gonna look up that. Um, but for now, I use Fish Lips Kiss because I don't have a problem with that. And I follow uh, Stephanie Pearl McPhee, the yarn hoarder. Um, I belong to her Patreon. I don't do much in the way of Patreon, but there's two people who I support. Um, one is Stephanie Pearl McPhee and the other is Lolo Did It and you've, you've heard me rave about Lolo Did It anyway so but Stephanie Pearl McPhee did uh, she does a series of videos there's so many tutorial videos on her Patreon they're brilliant and she talks about the holes that you get here and she shows you a really simple way to close those up so I don't have a problem with that anymore really happy with that um, and then the toe is just the standard, I think is it the wedge toe, where you decrease either side of the toe. I don't really like this toe, I don't like the look of it and I did, I changed, it. The, earlier this year I started doing um, a round toe but it's a bit longer, again it was a yarn harlot suggestion, it was a bit of a longer toe and I haven't yet worked out Oh my goodness, it would be so easy to do, and yet I haven't bothered so far. Um, my socks were kind of a little bit too long, so I just need to, I need to work out how many extra rows you get in your toe, and then just take them off the foot, don't I? <sighs> Sharpest tool in the tin, me. <laughs> anyway, these are lovely. So it's Gumdrop Nugget Colourway from Yarn Cafe Creations and I will be costing on the second one this week and that will hopefully get done fairly, <coughs> excuse me, um, fairly soon because I really want to cast on another Christmas colourway. I also want to cast on the Knitting on the Farm Socks by, sorry, the Farmhouse Christmas Socks by Angela who is Knitting on the Farm. Um, but um, yeah. I'm going to try and work, sort that out. But for now, in my lovely little Hohe sock bag, which I got from Suffolk Socks, I think I've shown you that before. That's that one. Obviously it helped if I kept the needles in the bag. Okay, so that was that whip. The second whip I'm going to show you is just proof that I have got on with the Ignite Socks by 
Becky Norman. <coughs> right, I showed you one that I finished and I was working on the patterned part of the cuff. And I didn't get as far with this as I thought I would once I finished the cuff for reasons which I will share with you in a mo. But look, so this is the second sock. I've got the, the trellis work done. I still, it's, it's a very straightforward pattern, but I just kept getting myself in a pickle again with it. If I didn't concentrate, if my concentration slipped just slightly, I went wrong on this and I ended up, I think I had to pull this back twice. It's ridiculous, but you can tell how much I like it because I didn't give up. Absolutely love it. It's worth the, the hassle. And it wasn't hassle, it was just me. I obviously just have a mental block with this pattern. So, yeah. So I'm really hoping I can withstand the leg of this one and get that further progress because that is my autumn colourway. That's the Lolo Did It yarn in pumpkin spice. And I absolutely love those. The project bag. I don't have to tell you who that's from, do I? That's Cherie, Ollie and Bella. We did a... Was it Christmas swap? Christmas gifts? I don't know. Last year she made me this project bag, which I love. And she has one too, because I sit on her podcast and I'm like, oh, I've got one of those. So that's that. And then in my Jilly Makes peanuts dashing through the snow Christmas bag. Oh, if I lean forward, the top of my head goes off the top, doesn't it? Right. I was a bit cheeky. I was a bit cheeky because, look, I'm getting my blocker out, so you know I've done something good here. Well, something good, something complete. Um, I had planned to cast on the, oh, I had cast on, hadn't I, the Gingerbread Dreams socks by um, Deborah, Candy Shop Deborah. I'm just getting them to look beautiful for you. Which, uh, this pattern was released a week or so ago. Most of you have seen that. This was part of the giveaway, the pattern giveaway. So they're the gingerbread dream socks. And for some reason, I just thought, well, I'm gonna start that. There's no knitting police, are there? I can start what I want. Or as was it? No, Ruth said I'll knit if I want to. And I like to say, I'm the boss of my knitting. I can decide what I do. So I thought, I fancy doing a bit of colour work. So I picked up the sock a couple of days ago and I did a whole sock. Sorry, that was really inane, wasn't it? There was a phase on Instagram when everybody, if they posed for photos, it was like this, this sort of mouth open. <clears throat> Drove me nuts it did, but then I'm, I'm an old fashioned old biddy, so, you know. Anyway. I'm putting my fingers over there because I haven't sorted out my little holes yet. Um, and I haven't sewn in the ends and I haven't blocked them. I literally cast off the toe yesterday. But look how gorgeous. This colour, this gingerbread colour is just beautiful. Okay. And then the heel. Oh, oh, I meant to stick a little gingerbread <laughs> Right, okay, you're supposed to duplicate stitch the gingerbread man onto the heel and you do it as you go. First of all, I thought, oh, I wanna do it as I go, I wanna knit the sock. But I thought, no, do what the pattern says. So I started and oh, do you know what? I was all fingers and thumbs. I just could not do it. And I couldn't make out the stitches to which ones, um, and this is, this is nothing to do with Deborah, this is me. There's a brilliant chart on there that shows you just how to Put your gingerbread man on the back. I won't show, I'm not going to show you the chart, obviously, but that's what it should be. Oh, could I do it? Nuh-uh. As my daughter likes to say when I ask her to do something, I could not do it. And then I thought, well, I'll knit the heel and I'll try doing it after that. No, couldn't do it. So at the moment, they are gingerbread man less. But, you know, my abs. 
Um, I will see. I don't want to be beaten for this. So I think what I'm going to do is when I've knit the second one, I'm going to put an orange um, or a darning, a, you know, darning mushroom or probably an orange because I don't have a darning in the heel and I'm going to have a go at duplicate stitching because I think it would be lovely. That said, I think they're lovely anyway. Look, I've still got my hand up. Christmas sock number one. I've already shown you the um, pattern, but Deborah's fantastic ball bands. Uh, and this is the Gingerbread Dream sock set. And for those in the UK, um, Claire of Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns, I don't know if she's still got the pre-orders up. She is dying. She has liaised with Deborah. They're collaborating and she is dying some of these sets for the UK knitters because of shipping costs and everything from the USA. So check out Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns, uh, Rabbit Yarns um, website. I'm honestly not quite sure whether she's still got the, the listing up or not. Right. That's that done. So... That really is all I've got to show you. Let me put my, no, that's my gumdrop, gumdrop yarn tag. Okay, I did a bit of a whip review this week just to see where I was at um, because I want to cast on, I said to you, the uh, farmhouse Christmas socks and another Christmas colourway and I give myself a little target so I've got to finish that before I cast on that, you know, the sort of thing. But I have briefly shown you my um, traveller's notebook that I keep my, do you remember I showed you this, um, my projects in? Well, I updated, I went a bit festive with this one. I updated my page. So that's my page for those. So I made sure I put all my new socks on there that I've started. But then I did myself a little review and I've just put a little insert, sorry, an insert page in my traveller's notebook. And I did myself, I typed it out and did a review of my whips. And I'm really pleased. Now, some of you might have gone, oh, okay, that's cool. Others might have gone, how many? This is all, this is all very controllable. I know exactly when and where and what I'm doing with these. Honest. This lot really are the ones that I'm working on at the moment. This lot down here. My two sweaters that I've said I probably won't be picking up till after Christmas there. And then some two pairs of socks that I that are fine. They can wait till after Christmas. And then a couple of bits that do need finishing. But yeah, so I'm pleased about that. I will be doing, talking about my journaling a bit more in Vlogmas and also my organisation of how I sort out my my projects and all that sort of biz. So I wanted to say as well, thank you to those of you who um, left me some hints and tips about my issue with the helical knitting on my campsite drop pullover. So thank you. A lot of you took the time to write quite long messages and I have read them all and I'm going to look up, there are a couple of suggestions to different methods which I'm going to look up so thank you so much, muchly appreciated because yeah, I'm going to change the way I'm doing it for sure. Uh, right, okay, so that is that. Good. That's all the knitting I'm going to show you. I am going to show you some new yarn now though. So how are we doing? Okay, not too bad time-wise. Still got a lot to show you, so I'm going to have to be relatively quick. Well, not quick. I'm not going to rush. No point in rushing, is there? I've been saying for ages that I've got some nice yarn to share with you. Well, I got another new load this week. Hmm. But first of all, I wanted to show you my Christmas yarn that I ordered, and I've talked about this, I ordered it, um, oh my goodness, back in August, September time. No. I ordered the autumn yarn and then the Christmas yarn I ordered in September. Fortunately, I ordered that in time to get before Christmas because this is from Desert Vista Dye Works and she has quite an extensive turnaround time um, and it's all dyed to order. 
but many of you will know her for the huge range of self-striping colourways that she offers. So I bought three because I don't buy from there very often. Well, I haven't bought from there for a couple of years now. And I thought if I don't use them this Christmas, I can use them next Christmas, but at least I've got them. So I ordered three colourways and I'm going to show you the first one is Father Christmas. This is called. So this is your traditional red, green. Well, okay, the blue and the sort of beige isn't really Christmassy, but it kind of is. It kind of works really, doesn't it, as a Father Christmas? I think so. I don't know. I think the beige has, yeah. I don't know, I can't remember from the picture how this knits up because a lot of her colourways have sort of the coloured repeats and then the neutral, which is possibly the beige in this. So um, it'll be interesting when I knit that one up. I could look on her website, but where's the fun in that? Let's knit it and see. So that was that one. Then this one, what's the name that got me on this one? Peppermint Hot Chocolate. So, oh no, yeah, Peppermint Hot Chocolate. Look at that. That chocolate is just the most divine brown. And then the red and the white. So I'm guessing peppermint is the red and white stripe and the chocolate. Or you could say the white is the cream on top of the chocolate. Could be a thing. So that's that one. And then lastly, and I blame Cherie from Ollie and Bella for this one. Gingerbread people. I'm going to say gingerbread man, okay? Because it's my podcast, I'm going to call it gingerbread man. But she calls it gingerbread people. There you go. So what's interesting in this one is that she's kept the gingerbread, and it is a different, it's a different chocolate, definitely a different brown. It's a more gingerbread brown. Um, in that colourway. So this is fairly plain, but look at that lovely pop of red. That's going to look so nice on the toes and cuffs. So I got the sock set for this one. So yeah, I went on her website and I saw these and I couldn't decide. And Cherie, for the last year or two, has been going mad for gingerbread house and gingerbread colourways. And I think she subliminally got into my head. I'm blaming you, Cherie, if you're watching. And so I had to get the gingerbread one. So, yeah, those three Christmas colourways. I've also got Elf from Bird Street UK, which I think I did share with you. So I can't decide which of those self-stripings to cast on. I'll have an Instagram vote. <laughs> or I could just, you know, be grown up and make my own mind up. So... That was they, these, these was those. I also got, and again, this is, this is Cherie. This is totally Cherie's fault. Unless you've been under a rock somewhere, you will know that one of the big hits of this kind of last few months has been the half and half wrap from Pearl Soho. And I was watching, every, I've been watching everybody knit it. And to be honest, I'm like, yeah, yeah, go on, what's next? But as time has gone on, again, there's something to do with subliminal kind of soaking in over time. And I suddenly started thinking, oh, do you know what, though? That's really nice. And I really wanted to try linen quill. The irony is that when I went to Pell Soho the year before last, when, I, um, when Hannah and I went to New York, and we were blessed enough to be able to go before the pandemic started, um, I went to Pell Soho, and I couldn't find anything there I wanted to buy. Um, so, you know, 18 months on, I think, oh, I'll buy some Pearl Soho yarn. Yeah. <laughs> but it was 15% off, always one for a bargain. The shipping was crazy. It was crazy. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But anyway, the reason I finally fell for it was on their Instagram feed, they showed a picture of another shawl. It wasn't the half and half, but they'd mixed two colours. And it was a deep purple and deep teal. And it was stunning. I just thought it was so stunning. So I thought, do you know what? Resistance is futile. I'm going to go and have a look on their website. 
and they've got so many lovely colours and I chose these colours and ordered it. And shipping, yeah, I'll talk to you about shipping in a minute. Anyway, it arrived yesterday. I can't remember choosing these colours. <laughs> I had in my head totally different colours that I'd chosen. Not totally different, but lighter. Anyway, I think these are going to be rather gorgeous and I'm going to show you. So, I have six skeins because, you know, go big or go home. And two colours that I bought are those. Aren't they pretty? So this one is, I believe, Celadon. I'm guessing that this one is Celadon. Yeah, anyway, colour. Colour. It is vintage Celadon, this one. So it's really... They, they must have dyed this. I almost want to say on a grey alpaca base. I don't know, it's really tonal. It's so pretty. And then this one is, I think, Crocus. Crocus Bud. And again, it's tonal. It's so pretty. And this is the Linen Quill from Pearl Soho. And it's 50% uh, Highland Wool, 35% Alpaca and 15% Linen. So these are going to be my half and half wrap and I think in the new year, do you know I just had a thought, I might use this as my prayerful make along entry, no, I'll do the blanket, I'll do this, I'm going to have to think of another make along to do in the new year that I can do this, but as you know the uh, it's a garter stitch shawl, I believe, and it's very big, but very straightforward. So good TV knitting, good snuggle up on a winter night. It's very soft. It really is. And I've got, and I'm going to show you because sometimes just putting it all together makes it look even more exciting. <laughs> even more exciting. There you go. There you go. So that's going to be, oh, you get the idea because with the half and... Hang on. <coughs> With the half and half wrap, you see a bit of it. Look at that. That's going to be beautiful. That's going to be lovely. Oh, I love this. So anyway, yes, Pearl Soho. So for those in the U... That's Honey with her bone. For those of you in the UK, this like, so this is 600 grams of yarn, okay? It was 15% off and it's such a such a um a good price. This is $18 a skein, which I think probably works out at about 12 or 13 pounds a skein. Shipping for this was $15. And that was, I don't know, seven to ten days, something like that. Crazy. And I spoke to another friend, Ruth, um, in uh, Ruth Loves to Knit podcast, who I also strongly recommend to you. My goodness, she's a prolific knitter and she's lovely. She's such a lovely lady. Um, and we were talking about how good the shipping was and hers was her shipping for hers because she's also bought it. <laughs> but she said to me last night, we were, she was in the knit night that I belong to. And um, she was saying she got hers. And by the time, you know, she got it, she put it away. And she's now thinking, oh, do I really want to knit that? I said, I, don't, I got this through and I thought, oh, I could knit a sweater, I could knit this. I could I'm like, no, no, stay focused. This is going to be a half and half wrap. Um, but yeah, it did make me laugh. But yeah, her, um, oh, I've untwisted this now. It's not going to look so pretty. Um, we both agreed that shipping was so reasonable. I, I imagine Pearl Soho ships so much that they have some sort of deal with the shipping people but anyway that is that and that will be a new year cast on if i can get ahead of my other bits that will be my new year cast on which will be really exciting i can't wait to do that okay so that's my yarn now then let us talk about then the blanket I'm going to be casting on next Wednesday because it will be 
yes it is Wednesday isn't it, yeah, uh, 1st of December for the um, prayerful make along. Honey's done exactly what she did last week, she's had a drink, got all wet sloppy chops and she's now sitting there with her chin on my lap, lovely. Right, so um, I'm going to be casting on the Coziest Memory Blanket by Kemper Ray, but I'm going to be copying Jules from So Sweet Violet, who did it as a, uh, what did she call it, a happy patchwork blanket. So I'm going to be doing a colour, a cream, a colour, a cream, a colour, a cream, like that. So, bless you. And I was all for doing it, and I spoke to at length, most likely, about doing in the Squiddle Village mini skeins. And I was going to buy the mini skein set every month. Well, I was looking at my minis yesterday and the day before. Don't you do that again. No. You lay down. I love my puppy dogs. Right, so I'm going to turn here because... I was looking at my minis. So I have this, oops, which are, some of these are teeny tiny. See how small they are. But I also know that the, the, um, the mitered, no, they're not mitered corner, the um, Cozy Memories blankets only take really small quantities. I think that might be a bit too small, but we'll see, we will see. So they're all in there, plus, see, this is the thing. But we care. Oh, no, I dropped it on the floor. No. Ow. Just hurt myself. Is there a doctor in the house? Pants. Right. I'm going to stand up. That's the chair squeaking. Not me. Right. So. So I had that basket of minis, and then I pulled out my unwound minis. Look at this. This doesn't include the Squiddle Village minis. I have such gorgeous sets. I have um, a Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit uh, set last year that Nikki, um, oh, what are you on Instagram, Nikki? Anyway, another lovely Nikki from my knit group. Um, sent me, we did a swap, so I have that there because I didn't want to use them for just any old thing. I have this lovely set from uh, Bird Street, who was at the time Mr B Yarns. I think I might have whipped one out of there. Yeah, because there's only four there. I obviously took one of those. Um, I still have some minis from my Suburban Stitcher advent calendar from the year before last. I have this... Oh, Finely gorgeous set, for, which was one of Ellie's lockdown sets um, from uh, Craft House Magic. Ellie, congratulations by the way, I doubt she's watching this, but she's had a baby boy called Jensen and all is good and well. So sending best wishes, best wishes and congratulations to you and Adam, Ellie. But there are these, I won't go through all the songs, all the songs are brilliant lockdown songs like I Want to Break Free, Don't Stand So Close to Me and so on. Um, and then I just got, these were from, these were sent to me, no, who sent those? These were sent by Stevie from the Curated Yarn Co as a gift. So I've got so many lovely minis there, plus the basket and I thought, I really, I really don't know, because I wanted to make, originally I was going to make um, a, a Squiddle Village blanket, that was going to be the thing, but now I think I can't in all, in all good faith do a Squiddle Village blanket when the whole idea of starting the blanket make along was actually to use up my minis, so I think I might keep my Squiddle Village minis to one side for the moment. I may still purchase the packs, I don't know. I need to consult my finances, basically. But I'm going to start the blanket with this. And I bought, again, copying jewels. I bought four balls of Drops Nord in their 01, colorway 01, which is kind of off-white. And this is alpaca polyamide and wool. 
So those of you who saw me do my scrappy blanket know that I used the Drops Alpaca, um, which was 100% alpaca four ply. But I thought I'd give this one a go. It's a bit lighter as well, I think, although it's still got 45% alpaca. Alpaca is very heavy yarn. Um, but I'm going to be using that and alternating the squares. I can't wait to cast this on. I'm so excited to cast this on. So that's that. I'm not going to twist around. But, ah, oh, I'll go that way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's my... It's my left, my right arm and my right shoulder that is, um, has the painful um, tendon muscle issues. So twisting around that way is not good, but twisting around that way is fine. Okay, now, cough is starting. Apologies for that. Right. Now, the next segment I have for you is a new one. Um, and I should say thank you to all those, oh, to those ladies who have suggested segments in the Ravelry group. I have got that thread up. So if anybody has any ideas of things they'd like me to talk about, um, for example, the difference between alpaca and wool or merino or whatever, things like that, anything like that, that was just off the top of my head, um, then do drop me a line or pop it into the segment suggestion thread on the Ravelry group. But this segment and I've said I'm going to talk about my quilting and my sewing so I'm going to call this Sheep in Stitches. Boom boom! <coughs> right we're now in the segment that I have called Sheep in Stitches. See what I did there? Bit of a pun. And I am going to share with you some of my um, quilting and patchworky and embroidery. <laughs> wow, I really am on it with the uh, with the words today. I have actually, you will see, added an item to my um, wardrobe. But as soon as this is the uh, the sewing section, I'm not going to talk about this until afterwards. Um, but I got cold, <clears throat> so it always seems to be around about this time of year when I really feel the urge to sew, to stitch. So not dressmaking. Um, dressmaking for me is usually a spring summer thing. It's really weird. We have these these sort of habits, don't we, or these times. So I have to keep an eye on the garden as well because Henry's gone out and he's got the look of trouble about him. I think we've had a furry critter in the garden. I think maybe a squirrel and he's been all around where the squirrel's been. Hmm. Anyway, sorry, I digress. So I love stitching. Um, I did subscribe this year to the uh, Nikki Franklin Stitchery Lane subscription that you subscribed. <laughs> I, I should never have stopped. I had a pause after the last lot <coughs> and I seem to have... <clears throat> okay, focus. Right, anyway. I've done three of those, my dad's done two. I haven't kept up super duper with them because I then went back to knitting. But this time of year, it's stitching all the way, baby. So, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. What is going on with my head? Anyway, um, one of my favorite Instagram accounts and small businesses to follow is Sarah and her mum Penny who have the business Pretty Little Fabrics and Trims. It's not even that. I got the name wrong. It's Pretty Fabrics and Trims. So look them up. This is their... Um, <clears throat> that's who they are. Pretty Fabrics and Trims. And they do little mini quilter samples. Last year I did the Christmas tree mini quilt, which you will see when I put out my Christmas decks this year. And when Sarah put up their mini quilt for Christmas this year, it's the Joie Noël sampler kit, which actually you just would have seen most of that on there. I couldn't resist it, I had to have that. And then she went and showed that she still had the autumn ones in stock. So I bought the autumn one, but that's tucked away because I'm not gonna get that done before Christmas and I'd rather get the Christmas one done before Christmas. <clears throat> Henry is now at the back door. What do you think? Should I let him in or should I leave him out in the cold? 
Tina, if you're watching this, who is Henry's um, human kind of grandma. <laughs> I don't know whether. Um, Hen um, Tina had Alfie and Bella, who were Honey and Henry's doggy parents. So, um, and I know she watches this from time to time, so she wouldn't want me to leave him out in the cold. And he's only just there. Have a drink of your tea or something. I will just let him in. Gonna have wet paw prints. Come on then, lad. Here's a good boy. If you have tummy ache later, oh, you're gonna have a drink now. Wash down all that horrible stuff you've probably been eating in the garden. Okay. Pretty fabrics and trims. Let me show you <clears throat> a picture of the sampler. I'm making this year for Christmas. So I made the Christmas tree last year. That is what I'm making. How pretty is that? It's so sweet. So it's got some uh, embroidery, some applique, uh, some quilting. It's so pretty. It's not huge. Um, and I will show you, I only started this yesterday. I only got it beginning of this week. Um, <clears throat> and I have started doing the, let's show you this first, that's, oh, sorry. I'm embroidering the Joie à Noël, so, which is in couching stitch, which I've not done before, so that's a new one to me. I'm not going to show you the back because it's an unholy mess, but, uh, there you go. Joie Noël. Anything French as well as a winner with me. I love France. France was my, French was my kind of major when I was at school. I was going to do French at university. Blah, 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 blah. J'adore la France. Unfortunately, France doesn't adore the UK these days. But, um, and then the whole size, that's how big it is. So it's bigger than my Christmas tree, Merry Christmas, that I've done. And then it will have obviously it's all it's all sketched, all marked on the fabric. And the kit is so beautifully done. You get you get your instruction booklet here. Let's see if I can hold this up. Obviously, the main fabric is there, and then you get there you go. Oh, I thought that might happen. So you get all the fabrics for all the little applique. There's sort of bits like labels and buttons in there. You've got the batting or the wadding for the quilt and the backing. Um, yeah, there's some plain backing there. Um, it's basically all in there and it's brilliant. It's so beautifully done. So thank you, Sarah, for that. And, and Penny, I shouldn't forget your mum, should I? Because mums are an important part of, well, I know your mum is a very important part of your business. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's all that. Um, I'm so enjoying that. And that would, you know, that would take me a good few weeks to do, not just this bit, but the rest of it. But, you know, when you're in a stitchy mood, you're in a stitchy mood, aren't you? So that was that, which is really lovely. Um, I bought the autumn one. I'm not going to show you the autumn one because, um, I haven't opened it yet. Because it's autumn and I'm now trying to move from autumn into Christmas mode. The other thing, um, I have made a couple of quilts <clears throat> and um, they are with the long arm quilter. This makes me laugh. It's like, say, the blind man's come in. And it's not a blind man, it's the man who does the blinds. So the long arm quilter isn't a quilting lady who's got a long arm. <laughs> it's the lady who does the long arm quilting. Uh, one of which um, I will show you a picture of. Um, shall I show you a picture of? Yeah, I will try and insert it here. I managed last week. I nailed the in picture in picture thing. Um, was a quilt for my son, for Jonah. I'd done him a. I've made him a memory quilt. I don't think I've shared that with you on here before. I have been saving his t-shirts since he was about. I don't know, 11, 12, something like that. Tucking away my favorite ones. And being a boy, he had a lot of various different t-shirts with logos and characters on them. 
and I've been putting them away and with the intention of one day making him a t-shirt quilt. Well, that one day was this year, so I have made it. I chose my favourite ones and I sewn them all together and did all the biz, bloody blid, which I'll talk about more when I have the quilt back. Um, it's now gone to Mel, who is actually Jan's sister, Janine, Faithful Sheep Crafts. Do you remember I mentioned her? Well, her sister also lives locally and has a long arm quilting business. I will put the details down below. So I went and met Mel and took the quilts to her and she is doing them this week actually. I took them a couple of weeks ago. So I will have them back and all I will then have to do is put the binding on the edges. So I'm really excited about that. I have two new quilt projects planned, three actually, for this coming year. One is a Christmas one, which I was hoping to get done for this year, but just wasn't so I'm going to be starting to do that um, from the new year I'm going to do a block or two a month of that one that's machine stitched I've got a new Tilda Windy Days quilt that I'm going to be making for my dear friend who is going to be 60 next year no way she looks 60 and we have known each other since we were in our very early 20s in fact I think I was probably 19 when I first met her and she's godmother to my children, I'm godmother to her children. Unfortunately, she lives quite a long way away, but I met up with her week before last, and I said to her, look, let me do you something special for your 60th. And I said, shall I make you a quilt? I'd love to make you a quilt. So I'm doing the Tilda Windy Days quilt. I've got all the fabric, I've washed it all, and it's all ready to start being cut, but I will probably wait until the new year for that. Um, because I am also doing, I've also started a new, hexi quilt of and I'm going to make and please you know don't laugh too much um, a paper pieced hexagon quilt over the next year over the course of the next year and it's going to be hand stitched and hopefully Jan is going to make along with me we're both going to make one because we decided last week when we were together that we fancied doing that and I'm going to be using primarily cowslip workshops fabric and probably some Lina Anderson fabric because I really love the muted blues and uh, beiges of those and Mel, the long arm quilting lady, <laughs> um, <clears throat> had some similar fabrics, some similar quilts in her studio when I went and oh my goodness, talk about enabling. So Jan and I went to the local shop near us at Hailsham and I bought my first lot of fat quarters and I have been cutting out hexagons and glue basting them because I glue based, I don't stitch or hand based, uh, you know, hand stitch based. And we are going to be making a version of Grandma's, is it Grandma's Garden quilt? I wrote, yeah, Grandma's Garden. And we were inspired by a photo put up by, um, hang on. Uh, Melanie of Southern Charm Quilts who is on Instagram she has the most amazing feed and her website is fabulous as well so I do urge you if you're interested in quilting either hand quilting or uh, machine quilting um, do go and have a look at Melanie's feed um, it's beautiful but I'm just going to find you a picture there it is so this is what we're going to be doing. So it's a, a slightly a different take. I, I gather there are lots of different versions of the Grandma's Garden quilt, but that is the version with the petals around in a different colour that we're going to be doing. So I have been, I have been cutting up my fabric. So I'll show you, give you an idea of my fabrics very quickly. Quickly, it's not a word in my vocabulary, is it? Right, so we've got that one. So I've cut these into strips for the hexes. Then we've got that one. <clears throat> so you'll get an idea from this of the colours. Then we've got uh, that one. This is more of a, a floral one. And then I've got... Um, this is little project bag I made last year when I first started playing with uh, freestyle machine embroidery and I've been putting all my hexes that I've basted in there 
So let me just find a few more of the different, ah, that's it. This was the one I wanted to show you. So I've got a darker, a darker blue there. So I've got that one, I've got that one. I've got some of them I fussy cut, but I'm not really gonna be doing that um, very much. What have I got there? And then there's the paler one, and then there's a much lighter one. So it's kind of those colours. And then the outside petals are going to be this stone neutral coloured linen. And then I bought a last lot of fabrics. I haven't told Jan this. <clears throat> so that's then. I bought these from Cowslip Workshops down in Devon. They were so quick. I ordered these. I got these the next day, literally. So for the bigger petals, I got that. So it's all these really soft, muted colours. That one. So this is from a B collection, obviously. And then that one. And I think if I put kind of those up, that gives you the idea, doesn't it? So yeah, I can't wait. I couldn't start putting together any blocks until I'd got this one because this is this is the neutral that goes around the outside. So I have got here, I printed off, I found, this is a free download. Oh, that's a bigger picture then of the quilt. Um, and this was a free download from a quilting website. So that's basically what I'm going for. But then I'm going to be putting a slightly, slightly different petals around the outside. But these white ones there is what is going to be that. So I couldn't put these blocks together until I got that. I've now got some. So I think this weekend I might actually start putting these pieces together because it's always nice to to see, isn't it? To see what you, as it comes together. Um, and I've got a fair few of these hexes done now. So I reckon, I mean, I've got loads. Whoa, there, in there. So I'm gonna start stitching those. If anybody's interested in stitching along in making a quilt next year, then do say so. Do let me know. Um, I can, I'm more than happy to put a chatter thread up in the Ravelry group and we can stitch along together. Um, that would be lovely. Okay, I did buy some Christmas fabric. I want to make a pie crust cushion. It's in one of the Joe Colwell books, I think. That also came from Cowslip Workshops. So I bought this fabric and my plan is to make a pie crust cushion. For Christmas this year so yeah I love that I just love this kind of style of art it goes with all these ones as well which I'm now going to throw out the way okay right so I think that's probably all we've got for sheep and stitches okay now we're back to some yarny biz let's just quickly tell you about my shawl we still, oh, we're probably heading up to an hour and a half almost. No, less than that. Never mind, don't matter. Um, this shawl I made last December. I call it my gingerbread shawl. I'm going to have to be cold for a minute. Because I made it with minis from the deconstructed gingerbread mini set that Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns did. Oh, they're appearing a lot this week, aren't they? So it's a very shallow crescent shawl. There you go. Try not to dunk it in my coffee. Quite a nice long one, so it wraps around. And you can see it's almost like a sampler. It's got different stitches and different segments as you go along. And as you know from my doing the knitting at the library cowl, I do like it when there's different textures. So pretty. Now the pom-poms, um, the pattern only calls for a pom-pom on the end, but I've put pom-poms all the way along. Look how that twirls. Oh, I just love that because it makes it nice and weighty. So then I'll probably be able to put this back on at all elegantly. 
because I stood in front of the mirror for three hours before I let you see <laughs> that one. Ah. I'm not very good at doing things back to front, as you will have noticed. Anyway, so that, and these, these kind of just drop down. It's such a lovely scarf to wear, such a lovely shawl. The pattern, I call it as, say, the gingerbread shawl, but the pattern is from Interpretations, Volume 4. It's by Hohi Locatelli, and it's the colour spell. So that's what it looks like. A la Hohi. This is what it looks like. A la Clara Pegatti. So yeah, really so you can see, yeah, she's only put she's you know lightweight pom-poms. But it's such and it knits up so quickly. It's great with minis. Um, I used I did use one the this brown here was um, from a full skein of chocolate orange from Fine Fish Yarns. I don't think she dyes anymore, Terry. But I've got stacks left over, so you could do that probably with the mini as well. Um, and yeah, really love it. Really happy with this. And I decided, right, come start Christmas, then the gingerbread shawl comes out. I don't know if Claire is dyeing up more of the deconstructed gingerbread kits or not. But obviously you could put your own Christmas colours together. So obviously, I'm going to give you permission. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So that was that. Okay, another section, another segment that we're going to move into is Sheeplet. Okay, so my Sheeplet section is going to be about what I'm reading and what I'm going to be reading, going to be reading, and so on. And I'm going to try and fit this in. It won't be every week because obviously it won't change every week. But it is particularly relevant this week because we are about to start the annual Sheep and Cheerful or Clara Pegatty Christmas Carol read along. But first, let me tell you about the books that I have been reading and thoroughly enjoyed. And as I'm telling you, I'm realizing that they are over there, and I'm going to have to reach over there with my poor Leo. I'm really not, not very good at looking after myself. Hang on. Oh yay! Now I'm reaching across. Okay. Here we go. See? Did it. Without too much lack of dignity, apparently. Right, so in terms of classics, as you all know, I am a big fan of classic literature. Um, it doesn't have to be English. Um, I read American classics from time to time and French classics from time to time, and Spanish, because of course I have read Don Quixote, among other things. But one of my all time favorite, favorite, favorite classic books is Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. And this is the Penguin Classics Library, English Classics Library which Hannah and I both love. We both collect quite a few of these. They're so pretty as well. It always helps when they're really pretty. And the print isn't super small. I have virtually finished this. I say virtually. This is the third time I've read this, possibly the fourth time. I studied this at school for A-level English literature and I read it last year and I am reading it again with my friend Sonia. She hadn't read it, so I said, come on, I need to read Portrait of a Lady. So we've read it um, and I've got to probably two chapters to go and I had another book I wanted to finish before we start Christmas Carol. So I kind of put, put old Henry down. That sounds terrible. I didn't put Henry down. Henry, honest, I didn't. But I put the book by Henry James down <laughs> oh, no. um, to pick up my next book that I'm going to tell you about. But you can see I'm very nearly at the end. Let me just show you this bookmark. I've been making these from um, Hillary from the Creative Faith Company on Instagram and YouTube. And she has an Amazon shop and an Etsy shop. And she, mm, this one went wrong, which is why I've kept it. She print gave you, you could download for, you know, pennies, a lot of printables. And I made bookmarks with the one of my fillet. Philippians verses in there 
In nothing be anxious, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And I love that. So I laminated it, put a ribbon through it. It was going to be a gift, but I used scrap paper and clearly I forgot to put a back. So that one is mine. Anyway, portrait of a lady. It's uh, basically, oh, here we go. Here's the back, right. Henry James, most magnificent literary heroine. Isabel Archer, a wealthy, beautiful and spirited American, is expected to marry when she travels to Europe with her aunt. But Isabel is resolved to enjoy the freedom that her wealth brings and must somehow choose between suitors who may all be hiding sickeningly different motives behind their avowals of love. Don't you love that? Avowals of love. Does anybody avow their love these days? That's a little bit, I suppose, I feel that is a very sparse and a bit misleading, the back. Um, but the heroine is indeed Isabel Archer. She's a young American woman who comes over to Europe. James does like to write about Americans' experience in Europe around about the late 19th century. So we're in Victorian times, really, for this one. Um, so Isabel comes over to England and then travels to the rest of Europe. And it's about... It is the portrait of Isabel Archer, basically. It's about her character, how it changes. Um, and it's... I think it's amazing. I love her. She drives me crazy. I think she's... Um, ridiculous I think she's great you know I go through all those emotions with Isabel so I do recommend that maybe in the new year put it on your reading list um, and quite frankly if anyone wants to do a read along with me next year I will happily read that again love that book I love the characters uh, just brilliant and actually Henry James uh, lived not far from me about 45 minutes an hour along the coast in a seaside town called Rye They've actually got his house with one of the blue um, historical plaques on it to say that he lived there. So um, he obviously came over from America. Um, so yeah, Portrait of a Lady. Look out for that next year. Maybe if people want to, we'll do a read along. The other book I've been reading, um, totally different now, um, was one I bought, well I wanted to get it for last Christmas but I couldn't get it, it was on pre-order from Amazon and it, it wasn't published last year, it's actually, let me find the year it was published, it's not, a new. Oh, anything with my shawls, I've got my hair falling out all over the place, yeah 2014 so this is quite old but for some reason it was out of print or out of stock so I bought a quilt for Christmas by Sandra Dallas. So of course this goes to all my things, quilting and sewing at this time of year. Quilting Christmas. Um, and it's set in 1864 in um, America in Kansas. So it's during the time of the Civil War. And it's, yeah, it's a lovely read. Um, obviously very different in terms of writing style to the Henry James, it's a modern author. But I'm really enjoying this, really loving it. Um, yeah, just really like it. It's about um, the women who are left behind, basically, when the men folk go off to fight in the Civil War and about, you know, the hard times they went through, about the fellowship they find through quilting and uh, the struggles they meet. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm hoping, yeah, I will finish this in the next few days. So really enjoyed that one. I am listening to a cup, uh, quilt story at the Half Stitched Amish Quilt Club I'm listening to on Audible at the moment. I won't talk about that this week. I'm on the second book of the series and I'm loving it. And it's it's light and fluffy, um, but again, it's it's about the Amish community and quilting, things that I'm really, really interested in and engaged with, and I really enjoy those. Finally, another book I bought, bought very recently, and um, I've only read one part of it, which because it's set out as a diary style, as an almanac, so I've read November's, I haven't read December's yet, but it is a newish book, and it's called The Wild Remedy, and it's by Emma, yeah, Emma Mitchell, and it's How Nature Mends Us, A Diary. 
and this is truly a beautiful book. It's done almost in the style of the country diary of an Edwardian lady, or is it the diary of an Edwardian country lady? Can't remember. Anyway, Emma talks us through the seasons and she does sketches and drawings and it is really, truly a beautiful little book. I mean, this is, okay, so that's July, obviously. No, a bit ahead of time there. Let's find November um, and I can show you November of oh, October. Did I read October? I think I might have read October. But anyway, but I only got it a couple of weeks ago. And then November is, let's find it. Ah. Sunlight Weakens, Colours Fade. So that's a sketch for November. And then it's about her observations, basically. And it's about her sketches, about what she finds in nature. And it's really... Um, let's read about it. OK. So it's her hand-illustrated diary. She suffered from depression, or as she calls it, the grey slug. I love that. For 25 years... In 2003, she moved from the city uh, into the country and she made a point of going out for a walk, photographing, collecting and drawing as she went. And she basically tracks nature and she links it and she helps it as a remedy to remedy when she's feeling down. Um, it says here, Emma's uh, reflecting on how these encounters impact her mood. Emma's unfailingly honest and affecting account of her own struggles with mental health is a powerful testament to how reconnecting with nature may offer us some awesome answers. She charts her seasonal highs and lows. Uh, she writes with wit and frankness and fills it with drawings, paintings and photography. And do you know what? Again, I'm thinking I might set up a chatter thread for this in my Ravelry group. If anybody wants to buy it and we just talk about each month as we go along, and how, whether we managed to get out a notice, which I did. I got out and started looking at, there was a particular uh, piece of flora that I saw as I walked the dogs. And it wasn't, it's was bright orange berries. It was, um, yeah, a bit of a messy looking plant, but it was everywhere. And I looked it up and found out that it's called stinking iris. So, <laughs> and it just made me smile. And now I go around and I say hello to stinking iris. And it's called that because if you crush the berries, apparently it smells like beef. Sounds gross, stinking iris. But it really tickles me. So I think if anybody's interested, again, do let me know. I'm going to put this up on... I'll put the link down below. I bought mine from Amazon. Jules, if you're watching this, this is the book that I want you to get or that I want to get for you. Um, because I think you will love this. I think anybody, I mean, it says on the back, it's the literary equivalent of Prozac. And we could all do with some of that, couldn't we? So, shall we dip into it in December together? If anybody fancies that, I'm going to put a chat thread up and we can talk about December, highs and lows, what we notice, all that sort of biz. So, yeah, that is my sheep lit section. That said, just this week, I'm going to tag on, or I'm going to tag on the start of the read-along, another read-along, which is our annual Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens read-along. So I have dug out, as you may know, I have various copies of this book because I love it and I try to read a different version each year. So this year I'm going to be reading my copy from Barnes & Noble, which I picked up in New York two years ago. You can see, anyone who's not sure about whether they'll be able to read it, look how thin it is. It's a really short story. It's got a lovely candle on the back. And look at the inside, that's so lovely with the hollies, the hollies, the holly berries. So let's see. As I said last year, um, it's set out as five chapters, or as Dickens calls it, five staves. So we will be starting this on the first Sunday of Advent, which is obviously this coming Sunday, which I believe is the 28th. Yes, the 28th of November, the first Sunday of Advent. We will begin reading stave one, not, not online together or anything, but we will be picking up our books and reading stave one. We've got to read 
roughly one stave a week to get it read before Christmas, but it's so short, you know. Um, I will be chatting about it on each podcast or in my Vlogmas episodes because I'm going to be doing Vlogmas through December and I will put a chatter thread up if anybody wants to join in on the chatter thread. We had a great thread going last year and just picking up bits of the quotes and things that we liked, the bits that meant something to us. Um, it is such, such a, a great story. I really recommend it to you. Um, Dickens says in the preface, he wrote this in 1843, he says, I have endeavoured in this ghostly little book to raise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humour with themselves, with each other, with the season or with me. May it haunt their houses pleasantly and no one wish to lay it. Their faithful friend and servant, C.D. Charles Dickens. So, the ghost of an idea became one of the most loved stories of our times. So, we're starting that this Sunday. Um, there will be a chatter thread. I have put up as well. I bought, I have to confess, I bought this. I've wanted to buy this. I got this for Christmas last year. It's Simon Callow's biography of Dickens. Um, I haven't read it yet. If I have a chance, I'm going to dip into this and I will share some things with you. Also, it was suggested by a lovely viewer last year. This book by Bob Welsh, 52 Little Lessons from a Christmas Carol but I'll put all the details down below. Right, here endeth the sheet clip section. Okay, so as promised, I have gone totally over the time that I said. I am planning to mainly do Vlogmas. I'm not going to be doing long podcasts every week as well as Vlogmas. I think that would just be a bit full on for everyone. I may do a quick jump on, I don't know. I want to keep the Vlogmas bit short and sweet, so 10, 15 minutes each day, because I think that's quite a lot for people. And there's so many great Vlogmas people around, aren't there? So without further ado, I'm going to announce the winner of last week's offering giveaway, which was, if you recall, it was slightly different. It was asking you to nominate someone who you would like to receive this hand-woven, hand-stitched project bag and this beautiful, vibrant skein of yarn from Stevie at the Curated Yarn Co. Okay, and this is her Chokya, Chokya colourway. And that is this beautiful orange and gold bag, sewn together, woven by me, sewn together by Gemma, little grey girl. So the entries for this, you had to nominate someone to receive this gift. And the entries were to be done either via emailing me. I'm sorry, I keep looking at the, the screen, the viewfinder, not at the camera. So I'm going to be irritating lots of people by doing that. Sorry about that. Um, you had to nominate someone either by emailing me, which we had someone email me and I put her into the draw, or on Ravelry. We had quite a small response to this. So I'm thinking either, either um, nobody liked it. <laughs> Or nobody's got any friends. So there you go. That's fine though. I did, we had 17 people nominate people and there were some lovely stories of gratitude. So do hop over if you can onto Ravelry. Um, I'm gonna grab my computer here because I've got the entry I pulled. I did the whole random, random selection. And the winning entry was Socks Knits, which is Heather. Hey Heather. Heather chats to me, she's lovely. Heather Tucker. And she has nominated, and I'll read you what she said. I would like to nominate Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. So Ali, you're the winner. She puts up so many lovely videos, as well as being the perfect mum and also working part-time. Her videos are so well done and really entertaining. She podcasts every day in October and is planning to do Vlogmas, as well as running the highly successful Strictly Sock Along. Please consider Ali, as I'm sure she would love that wonderful skein of yarn. Um... And that's from Heather. So Heather, you'll be pleased to know that Ali has won this. I can reach out to her because obviously she's got the podcast and I know her on Instagram. I will tell her that she was nominated and that she won the prize. One thing I didn't mention last week is that I'm also gonna send a prize to the person who nominated. So Heather, 
You have won yourself a prize. And you have won another little project bag woven by me. It's got actually my, uh, my hugs from uh, Clara pin on there. And this was hand woven by me and stitched. Again, it's a little sort of sock project bag or a hat with a box bottom. Got the lovely faux suede, or the suede handle, like that. And you are also going to get, are they the ones? Have I got the right ones out? Yes. These two Koi Goo Minis. So it's all blues. So Heather, you have won yourself this. Thank you for taking the time to nominate someone. Thank you. I'm sure Ali will be really thankful to you as well. So Heather, can you message me and send me your address details? I might well have them from previous times, but send them to me anyway. Either email, Instagram or Ravelry, I will send these out to you. So thank you for nominating Ali. And Ali, I'm, I'm sure she probably doesn't watch the podcast, but Ali you will be receiving these too. So again, thank you for all those who entered. I haven't got another giveaway this week, but there will be one coming up soon because I do love giving stuff away. But I think that brings us to the end. I think it's about time because it's another super long one. Um, let me just review this. We've done the prayerful blanket, uh, the prayerful make along. Um, also just a plug, those of you who like the farmhouse Christmas socks, I think I mentioned this, Angela, who is knitting on the farm, is having a make-along starting on the 1st of December, and she's going to be offering prizes, and there's going to be Zoom chats and knit-alongs and all sorts of things. So hop over to Angela if you want to make her Christmas on the farm socks. I should be casting on a pair myself as well. Um, that is it. That is really it. Whoa. So, I will see you again next Thursday, no, next Wednesday, for the start of Vlogmas, December the 1st. I will, we will be putting up uh, decorations and doing lots of Christmassy things, hopefully getting together with some Christmas knitting friends. Um, and I will try and keep it at about 10 or 15 minutes a day. Haven't decided whether I should podcast through Vlogmas or not. If you have any thoughts on that, do let me know down below. And I'm speaking very quickly now because I'm hoping I've got to wrap this up. <laughs> because, um, yeah, it's gone 12 o'clock. Although, no interruptions. No, did I tell you, when I had the break, the natural break, the delivery came. The delivery I was expecting. So, the camera wasn't on. Thus, the dogs didn't even bark. There you go. Twas ever thus. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm sending out so much love and hugs to you all uh, with best wishes for the last week of November. Uh, those of you who celebrate Advent and the, the um, Christian faith aspect of Advent, I'm sending warmest wishes and blessings to you all. I will be in Vlogmas talking about my um, Bible studies. I have the Advent, the She Reads Truth Advent Bible study that I'm going to be starting and oh, so many other things. But for now, I'm gonna stop waffling, sending you all my love, happy knitting, and keep cheerful.